Hey, this is Tony here with Salt Strong, and in this video, we're going to talk about rigging up shrimp using popping corks. Now, the corks that I'm going to be discussing in this video are just these standard styrofoam corks. They don't have all the beads and metal wire and all that attached to them, like these here. These, in my opinion, are just more difficult to use. They're not very user friendly, especially if you're fishing in an area where the depth constantly changes and you need to adjust how deep your lure or your bait is on the bottom. Because what happens is with these, you, you attach your main line to one side, then you have to attach your leader to the other side. And whatever length of leader you have on there, that's it. You have to cut the line, retie it, if you happen to go into an area at a different depth. With the standard styrofoam ones, all you have to do is pull the little pin, slide it up and down your line to whatever depth you may be fishing, and you're good to go. And also, you can take them off if you need to, you can put them back on. Say you get to an area and you just wanna start casting and retrieving your lure, you can easily take this off without having to cut your line and retie. Now you do have a couple options when it comes to these popping corks. First, you have the unweighted version which means there's no weight in it. It's just very light styrofoam with the pin in there. And what these are more ideal for is if you want to see when your bait actually gets down to the bottom or your bait finishes dropping. Because when you cast this out, it's going to hit the water. It's going to lay there on its side. And then as your bait slowly falls down, it's going to start turning and turning. And then when it stops or if it's completely upright, you know your bait has settled. And then you can give a couple twitches to the popping cork and then just continue that and it's a much slower retrieve. So you can do that with these unweighted ones and then you have the weighted popping corks where it's automatically gonna sit upright no matter where your bait is. If your bait is falling, this is already gonna be upright, your bait's gonna fall. So you don't really have an idea of when your bait actually settles to the bottom unless you see your cork kind of bounce a little. So those are the two options. I prefer to just use the weighted one because with that extra weight in there, you get better casting distance, it's a lot heavier, and you can cast further. So I go with the weighted version. Now, when you are rigging these up, as I mentioned before, you can adjust the depth very easily. So I pretty much just keep a standard uh, leader length on there, anywhere from two to four feet. That's typically the depth you're gonna be fishing with a popping cork anyway. And if you need to go shallower, you can easily just slide it up the line, up your leader, and connect it to wherever you need to. Now, if you are using braided mainline to a fluorocarbon or mono leader, ideally you want to attach the cork to the mono or fluoro leader. I don't recommend attaching it to the braid because the braid is very thin and it will easily start digging into the styrofoam on the cork. And what's gonna happen is your cork's constantly gonna be moving up and down and it's gonna be out of place. So what you want to do is attach it to the mono or fluorocarbon section. And very simple to do. You'll notice these corks have a slit right down the middle. Just lay your line in there, like so. Lay the line in there, make sure it's sitting on the bottom or the opposite side of where that slit is. And then just push your pin in there and you are good to go. As you can see it doesn't move very much when it's attached to that leader material. Now over time your line will start eventually digging itself into the styrofoam and it will become loose and it will start sliding up and down your line. And instead of throwing the cork away and wasting it, what you can do is just double up the line. You're basically just going to loop the line around the cork and then back into that little slit there. Keep it nice and secure. Then you're gonna push the pin back into the cork, like so. It's a little tough because I got a lot of line in there now and the cork is fairly new, but push that pin into there. And as you can see, the line's doubled up. It's wrapped around the cork, so that will keep it from sliding around. Now, one downfall about that, if you do happen to hook into a really big fish, what may happen is your line will pull and pull and pull and over time it might pretty much break that cork in half. So that's a little downfall of it, but it will keep that cork from sliding up and down your line unintentionally. So that is what I recommend as far as attaching the cork to your line. Now, as far as rigging up the shrimp, the types of hooks I like to use are a two-aught 
light wire circle hook. I like to go with these light wire hooks because they don't weigh the shrimp down too much. They allow the shrimp to move around freely and also they're small enough that it doesn't really affect the shrimp's natural motion as well. And they're plenty big enough to hook into really some really big fish. These little hooks are very strong. So as far as actually attaching the shrimp to the hook, this is an artificial shrimp, not a real shrimp, but I just want to use it for uh, demonstration purposes. When you hook these shrimp up, there are two areas that are more ideal, either the front of the head or the back by the tail. You never want to hook a shrimp in the middle because that's really going to affect its motion. Also, it's going to put a lot of drag on the shrimp and it's just not going to be natural. It's not going to let that shrimp uh, swim around naturally. So what I like to do right between the eyes of the shrimp and the organ back here, the brain or whatever is going on back there, right in the middle, you're, you're going to see a clear section on the shrimp and you want to hook that shrimp right there in that middle section, just below that little mohawk they have there. So hook the shrimp right there. As you can see, it's hooked up, rigged up, and every time you pop the cork, it's going to naturally pull that shrimp forward in a swimming motion or their natural swimming motion. Now, as far as rigging them up in the tail section, usually what I like to do is pinch off the very end of the tail or that fan part of the tail and then put the hook through going from underneath the tail and out. So I'll show you that here. Go through the bottom of the shrimp, out through the top of the shrimp at the base of the tail, like so. So this way, when you go to pop the shrimp, it's going to go backwards like a natural fleeing motion that a shrimp does. And if you pinch the tail off, that's going to release some extra scent into the water, which can help draw on the fish. And pinching the tail off is not going to kill the shrimp. I've had shrimp stay alive for a while with pinching the tail off. As long as you don't puncture any important organs up in the head, the shrimp will stay nice and lively. And then one last tip that I forgot to mention, what you don't want to do as well when you do put your cork on your line, you don't want to put your cork right over your leader knot. Also, you don't want to put it too close to the leader knot just in case it does slip a little bit. You don't want the cork pushing up into the knot where your leader is attached to your main line because you can risk popping that knot or that knot coming loose. So make sure you give yourself enough leader line that you can connect the cork. I'd say anywhere from four to five inches below the knot that attaches your main line to your leader. That way, if it does move a little bit, it doesn't bump into your leader and then make sure you have enough leader line that you can adjust the depth to either uh, however shallow you're fishing or however deep. So that is pretty much it. You have your popping cork with the shrimp attached to the end. Very effective rig, especially if you're fishing with some newer people or kids. They can cast it out. They can give the rod a couple twitches every few minutes or so just to make that extra noise. And then you have a live bait uh, shrimp right sitting on the bottom for those fish to eat. Now again, I like using these basic styrofoam corks because you can easily take them off your line if you need to without cutting your line and having to retie. And then you can fish a free line shrimp if you want to. So it makes it very easy to fish with a popping cork or without it. So that will wrap up this video on rigging up a shrimp with a popping cork. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Also, if you have any additional tips or experience using popping corks and you would like to share that information with us and help out some other people who may be watching this video, definitely do so down below. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.